communion is so important to me because it's the culmination of the uh, sanctuary service or the worship service. We've heard the message from the minister, we've heard the reading from the Bible, we've heard beautiful choir. It's time for us to come forth and accept our, our responsibility with Jesus Christ. I think for me it's the uh, reminder that um, Jesus gave his life for us and the reminder of that Last Supper and that the simple elements of um, bread and wine that uh, Christ gave his life for us, he shed his blood for us. Uh, and that weekly reminder just um, instills, instills that great gift. Six, eight. In your green book, if you'd like to sing along, you don't have to stand up, just enjoy singing.
This is the day that the Lord has made. Let us be glad and rejoice in it. How are you all this morning? Good, good, good. My name is Pastor Andrea, and I want to say thank you all for um, coming into the house of the Lord to worship us and all those who have joined us online. If this is your first time with us in person and also online, a special welcome to you. And if you have joined us online, please let us know that you're here and share your, how we can be in prayer with you on this week. And also, if it's your first time with us, if you let connect card out, we'll get a welcome gift out to you on this week, and I will be in touch with you as well. Over the next few weeks, we are going to focus on who we are as First United Methodist Church of downtown Bentonville and how God is calling us into the next year. We're already beginning to plan for 2021, 22, and we will focus on a sermon series on what it means to come together and come to um, this, um, come together and come to the table, and what that means for us as a church. We'll ask the question, how do we learn? How do we gather? How do we serve around this table? And how do we extend this table out into our community? We want you and your family to prayerfully consider how you can share your time, your gifts, and your resources as we attempt to, um, to live out our mission that God is calling us in the here and now, in our church, and in our community. I want to invite you to go ahead and stand as we participate in our call to worship. Where charity and love are, God is there. The love of Christ has gathered us into one. Let us rejoice in Christ and be glad. Let us love the living God, and from a sincere heart, let us love one another. Good morning. Our hymn is hymn number 617. I come with joy. I invite you to, to open our hymn book with us and sing as unto the Lord. I come with joy. Welcome to Pastor Andre. I'm Reverend J.J. Whitney. I'm the senior pastor here. And add my welcome to you who are joining us for the first time and those who joined us for the first time for a long time here in the sanctuary. So good to have you here this morning. What a joy to be in this Easter season and celebrate the resurrection together as a church family. Our gospel lesson this morning is from the gospel according to St. Luke, the 22nd chapter, verses 14 through 27. Please stand as you are able for the reading of the gospel. When the hour came, he took his place at the table and the apostles with him. He said to them, I have eagerly desired to eat this Passover with you before I suffer. For I tell you, I will not eat it until it is fulfilled in the kingdom of God. Then he took a cup and after giving thanks, he said, take this and divide it among yourselves. For I tell you that from now on I will not drink of the fruit of the vine until the kingdom of God comes. 
Then he took a loaf of bread, and when he had given thanks, he broke it and gave it to them, saying, This is my body, which is given for you. Do this in remembrance of me. And he did the same with the cup after supper, saying, This cup that is poured out for you is the new covenant in my blood. But see, the one who betrays me is with me, and his hand is on the table. For the Son of Man is going on as it has been determined, but woe to that one by whom he is betrayed. Then they began to ask one another, which one of them it would be who would do this. A dispute arose among them as to which one of them was to be regarded as the greatest. But he said to them, the kings of the Gentiles lorded over them, and those in authority over them are called benefactors, but not so with you. Rather, the greatest among you must become like the youngest, and the leader like one who serves. For who is greater, the one who is at the table or the one who serves? Is it not the one at the table? But I am among you as one who serves. The word of God for the people of God. Thanks be to God, and please be seated. Let us pray. O God, we gather around the table with Jesus, just as the disciples did on the night of the Last Supper. We come to the table to be nourished by the Word. We come to the table to be nourished by Jesus' words. And so we pray that you open within us a way forward as we continue to follow Jesus along the way. We pray this in the name of Jesus Christ. Amen. Now there's something sacred. breaking bread with them. Some of my service work over the years has been just that, eating dinner, eating meals with men and women and children, listening to their stories, having them ask questions about my life. Breaking bread allows us in an authentic way to be with those whom so many think are invisible or undeserving. When you sit down with someone to eat, You have to slow down. You have to be present. You have to contribute to the conversation in the way that just serving the meal would not allow. So just as you share bread, you share your common experience. You you share in the joys and the pains of human existence. Breaking bread together illustrates service as reciprocity. All around the table are being served and are serving each other. Jesus at the table is one of the last things he, do, he does before he's betrayed. Now he's with his closest friends, though, those with whom he's walked miles to Jerusalem. They've seen him do amazing things. They've heard him tell stories that were used to teach them about the nature of God and a way of being in the world. They, they sh- share tables with crowds and outcasts and the downtrodden, and on many occasions they show solidarity with them. Here the disciples and Jesus come together to celebrate one of the holiest days of their tradition, the Passover Seder. Now I've had the honor, like some of you, to be invited to a Passover Seder with folks from the Jewish faith, and that entire tradition takes place around the table, around a meal. It's a time to celebrate and to tell stories of the past, to remember their identity as God's people, and to articulate a vision of what the world could be. There's a lot of joyfulness and fun moments that come when you hide the matzah for the kids to find, or or when the kids ask the questions, why are we eating unleavened bread? Why are we eating bitter herbs? You may remember that the Passover meal is an annual event that recalls the time that God saved the people from the angel of death as plagues fell on the people of Egypt. Moses was called to bring the Hebrews out of Egypt into the promised land. And as the angel of death slays the firstborns, the Hebrew people have been instructed to put the blood of the lamb on their doors so that the angel of death can pass over their homes. After these plagues, God tells the Hebrews to leave in haste so their loaves, don't have, their loaves of bread don't have time to rise. And so the annual Passover meal 
is a time that Jews eat the unleavened bread in remembrance of what God did to save them and to give them life. Now, as Jesus is leaving the Passover meal with his disciples, he looks around the table. He's thinking about the memories of the last three years in ministry with them, and he's thinking about the misunderstandings. He's thinking about the triumphs. He's remembering the frustrations. But here they are together at the end. Now, when something bad's about to happen to you, you just want to gather all your people up. You want to huddle together. And so it must have been some consolation for Jesus to be surrounded by those who were closest to him. He knew the things he was about to face, and yet he found comfort in breaking bread with his friends. I want to call your attention to the mixed emotions of the moment for the celebration of religious traditions, but for the pain that he was about to endure, for the anxiety of the night, but for the laughter that happens when you're around the table and you're sharing a meal, for the upcoming denial from these persons who are seated around the table with him, and the knowledge that he was going to have to go the rest of the way by himself. Jesus lifts the bread and the cup, and he asks that from this time forward, do this in remembrance of me. These words became the sacred words of our communion table, to both remember Christ's presence and to remember the body of Christ. As our founder of the Methodist Church, John Wesley mentions in his sermon the duty of constant communion. Jesus makes it clear that sharing the table is a commandment. Do this. He means you need to continue this practice of, of coming to the table and sharing in the bread and the cup and remembering him. And the table is also the place where we Christians have continued to experience that Christ is present. Just like the disciples on the walk to Emmaus after the resurrection, Jesus shared a meal with them and they recognized that Jesus was at the table with them. The risen Christ appears when we bless, when we break, when we share in the meal together as followers of Jesus Christ. And this table is a place where we remember, where we put the body of Christ back together every week. Just as we come around the kitchen table with our families, this table is where we are most certainly a church family, drawn together in Jesus Christ, reconciled despite our differences because we share in God's grace. We recall our past and we look with hope to the future. At the Last Supper, the disciples argue over who is the greatest. And yet, they all share in this one bread as the body of Christ. Even in their denial and their betrayal, Jesus still offers them the bread and the cup of his presence. And that is good news. The companions at Jesus' last Passover meal didn't do right by him. He offered his body. He offered his blood. He shared that someone at the table is going to betray him. But yet, he still broke the bread with them at the table. The act of Jesus in the last few days of this life are going to come back to this moment of hospitality, this moment of breaking bread, of offering himself in the midst of the pain that his companions will inflict upon him, even when they don't do right by him. He's still sharing the bread with them at the table. On mission trips, I often talk about the idea of being someone's companion because it literally means to break bread with, to break bread with. So when we sit at the table with those who are really struggling in life, when we go to serve them and we know that they're struggling from addiction, we know that maybe they're far from family, um, maybe they don't know what the future is going to hold, and we know we can't fix the situation we know we don't really have some wisdom to offer, but we can share in this moment. We can offer hospitality, who we are, who they are. We can break bread together. We can accept hospitality. We can bear witness to the joys and the pains 
of one another's lives. Now here at FUMC Bentonville, we have been celebrating communion for over 30 years every Sunday. It is a unique practice as United Methodists. It centers us as a church family each week. It reminds us who we are as Christians and who we are in the city of Bentonville. When Dr. Guy Whitney began to talk about communion as a way to renew worship, he said that growing up, he knew about grace. He had accepted Christ as his personal Savior. He had followed the Lord. He became baptized. But at the age of 31, because of going through a life crisis, he said, I needed to experience God and the church reaching out to me and inviting me to the table. He said, I felt less the need to explain God and more the need to experience God. He said, I know that I'm somewhat an anomaly as a United Methodist pastor in more ways than one. He said, I know I'm advocating for communion every Sunday, but I was a thirsty man who found a well, and now I want to show others where to get a drink. When I was early in my ministry serving communion, I had a young woman come to the, the table, and she refused to take the bread. When I asked her later why she did not want to take, she replied that she didn't feel worthy she didn't feel like she had done all that she could to prepare for the communion table that day. And I reminded her that no matter what we've done or what we haven't done, we are welcome to this table because of what Jesus has done. We're welcome to Jesus' hospitality. We're welcome to this meal of grace. So if we take seriously that this communion table is food for our souls, as John Wesley said, then we remember that coming to the table each week leads us from sin and into grace. Leads us from sin and into grace. Then we can never turn our backs on a feast that is prepared for us. We must continually go to the table. God is the actor of this communion meal. And this is the place we come to for companionship with the Almighty God. To recall that our lives are a mess. They are dismembered. They are torn apart. And we come to this table to remember ourselves to be put back together. Amen. This table is a symbol of our unity here at First United Methodist. Because if Christ shows up and bids us to meet him here at this table, how does that translate into how we treat each other? And how we live in communion with our neighbors. Because we are all in need of being remembered. Of being put back together. We all have this need in our souls to come to the table. And the fact that we are all invited to God's table in the midst of our betrayals and our denials. When we are in the sin, we are missing the mark each week in discipleship. In the ways that we fail to be a church that is loving and accepting of our differences over the years of arguments, dare I say, over worship, over pastors, over our future, then we must admit that we need to come to this table. We must come together. We must come to this table because we need to put our church family back together again. And so we gather each week at the table a do-over for our walk with Christ, a do-over for our walk with each other. We haven't done what we should. We come with our pain and our struggles, but we also come remembering that the bread of life is here for us. The history of salvation in this bread is present as Jesus breaks it and we continue on the journey when we come to the table, the barriers between us and God and between each other are broken. We come as we are. We come united in our struggle. And we aren't just given the right to be here. We are welcomed. We are encouraged to take our share, to be given the grace that is available. In this meal, we remember the life and death of Jesus, yes, but we celebrate his real presence with us. It's that life-giving companionship. It began on the night 
when the bread was first broken for us. At this meal, we are put back together as the body of Christ. Now let us be served. Amen. ushers to come forward and um, as we are they're coming forward as we remind you we're starting um, this um, new sermon series as we prepare as we go into the new year um, as we are planning over the next four weeks to continue the sermon series on coming to gather and what it means to gather at the table I want to invite you to continue to think about what it means for you um, to participate and to pray about um, in their giving your gifts your time and your resources to support the mission of our church as a place where all are welcome to receive God's grace. Be on the lookout this week as our church family shares. I give to First United Methodist Church of downtown Bensonville because our Facebook and Instagram pages too. Let us pray um, for over our offering. Generous God, you have given so much to us, and we have offered back such small amounts in return. We have often served you as part-time followers, given a fraction of our time and resources to your mission. We strive to do better, forgetting that what lies behind and straining forward to what lies ahead, pressing on to the goal of serving Christ with all our being. In his name we pray. Amen. As you're giving your tithes and offerings unto the Lord, sing as unto the Lord, hymn number 620, One Bread, One Body. You may remain seated as you sing.
Thank you. You may be seated. Living God, giver of life, hear us as we pray, saying, pour out your blessing, O Lord. Send us your spirit of peace. We pray for the church. Let your church be a living sign of the woundedness and healing of Christ, sharing the gift of forgiveness and the gospel of reconciliation. Pour out your blessing, O Lord. Send us your spirit of peace. We pray for the earth. Help us to see the scars of death that mark your good creation and to seek the blessing of life that you offer to all creatures. Pour out your blessing, O Lord. Send us your spirit of peace. We pray for all nations. Show us how good and pleasant it is when people live together in unity and anoint us with your wisdom so that we may seek the ways of life. Pour out your blessing, O Lord. Send us your spirit of peace. We pray for this community. Give us a vision of the common good, not clinging to our possessions, but seeking the fullness of life for all as a testimony to Christ's resurrection. Pour out your blessing, O Lord. Send us your spirit of peace. We pray for loved ones. Be near to those who walk in darkness and lead us all into Christ's light so that our fellowship may be true and joy may be complete. Pour out your blessing, O Lord. Send us your spirit of peace. By the blessing of your spirit, help us to live as we pray so that we, so the world may come to know the gift of life in Christ our Lord. Amen. Please stand and join me in our affirmation of faith. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, created of heaven and earth. I believe in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended to the dead. On the third day, he rose again. He ascended into heaven, is seated at the right hand of the Father, and will come again to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, and forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. You may be seated. 